This video is sponsored by Amazon. The HTC 10 is one of a handful of flagship smartphones to feature the Snapdragon 820 quad-core processor paired with 4GB of RAM. I've been using this phone as my daily driver for the past couple of months or so, and these are my two cents on the performance of the device. I'll start by saying that the HTC 10 still has that HTC feel to it. It's kind of hard to explain what that is, but if you've ever used an HTC phone, you'll kind of know what I'm talking about. The scrolling speed isn't particularly fluid or responsive to touch, but the phone as a whole is very fast. It's consistent. It all flows together very well. The animations appear to match the raw processing speed nicely right out of the box. Now you can change the animation scale in the developer options to help increase the snappiness of the phone, but I'm a fan of how it performs out of the box. If this were a Samsung phone, you could bet that I'd be increasing the speed of the animations. Now I covered the software in detail in the previous challenge video. Uh, click below to watch that video if you haven't already. And since that video, I've actually been using the Google Now Launcher exclusively. With it, the HTC turns into a Google Play Edition device as just about every area of the phone resembles pure stock Android. There's very little next to none bloatware on this phone with the exception of Verizon's bloatware. Uh, so all of this helps create a fast smartphone. I mean, the only downside really is that you're not gonna get updates straight from Google. When running graphic intensive apps, even Pokemon Go, for example, the phone can get pretty warm. It gets even warmer when walking around catching Pokemon with a battery pack charge in it. Is it uncomfortably hot? Not in my opinion, but it is something you will notice. And besides the occasional bugs and glitches in Pokemon Go, I haven't noticed any performance issues. It runs the game very well. For other graphic intensive games like Asphalt 8, the HTC 10 shows little signs of strain. Animations are smooth. I think what really holds it back is just data speed. So if you're running a graphic intensive app like Pokemon Go, which constantly needs to be refreshed from loading data, that's where you're going to run into some performance issues, but it's not so much the processing speed or anything like that. It's connectivity issues. So that's the conceptual analysis of the performance of the HTC 10. Now let's run some tests to give you some numbers. Geekbench 3 is a test commonly used to gauge the processor performance of a device. I use it often and many others in the tech community do as well. Chances are you've probably seen it. Geekbench 3 gives the HTC 10 a single core score of about 2100 and a multi-core score of about 4200. Not the best results. The OnePlus 3 manages to uh, significantly outnumber these results, but they're still impressive nonetheless. It falls just short of the S7 and S7 Edge. And Tutu 3D Bench is a benchmark app, part of the classic standalone and Tutu benchmarking application. Uh, it's designed to test 64-bit CPU and UX performance, which the standard app cannot do. So they made this little extension called 3D Bench. And Tutu tests the processor performance and GPU performance. It's like the best of both worlds. It spits out a score of around 105,300, give or take. 3D Mark is the final test, and it's all about testing the GPU and gaming performance. It of course tests the processor, it has to, but it looks at graphics capabilities specifically. Running the Slingshot test, 3D Mark gave us a score of about 2300 and a graphics score of nearly 2900. In other words, the can't touch this score. Not only is this device one of the most powerful available, but your score is also better than average. Or so it says. All right, so now the fun part begins. You can download these benchmarks, give them a whirl, and then drop your score in a comment down below along with what device you are running to kind of give others some perspective as to just how powerful the HTC 10 is. Hey, I'm not saying your device is slower, but chances are it probably is. I also recommend you perform a simple Google search to find the scores of various other smartphones. But with that said, if you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button, subscribe if you're brand new, as always, I'm Bo HD from PhoneDog.com. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching, and I will see you right back here in the next one. See ya. You can save up to 25% on apps, games, and in-app items by purchasing Amazon coins. And the more you buy, the larger the discount. For example, you can buy $10 worth of Amazon coins for $9, which is a $1 savings, or you can buy $100 worth of Amazon coins for $90, which is $10 of savings. 100 coins are worth $1. So you can download a game like Cookie Jam for free, then you can buy a jar of 275 gold coins to use in the game for about $10 or 1,000 Amazon coins. Since you can buy $10 worth of Amazon coins for $9, you actually save a dollar, but you could end up saving more depending on how many coins you buy. Like I said earlier, the more you buy, the larger the discount. You can learn more about Amazon coins using the link in the description.